as I promised, today we're on the R9T. Now, regular viewers will know, I, I recently rode the new 2021 Triumph Speed Twin, and I said I was going to do a comparison between the R9T, the Speed Twin, with Greg. Well, unfortunately it didn't happen due to the weather. Lashed it down when you're going to be recording that video. So what I'm going to do is take the R9T out on my own, give you my feelings about this bike and also draw some comparisons with the new Speed Twin because even though these bikes are very different they're both sort of a sporty retro -y bike aren't they so we can definitely draw some comparisons between them so settle back make yourself a cuppa get yourself comfortable let's get on with it Chopsy roll the intro <laughs> So this is the base BMW R9T. We know there's different versions. There's the Scrambler. There's the, uh, well, there's been the Racer. There's the Urban GS, you know, and a couple of others. This is your base R9T. This bike has a couple of extras. This has the Comfort Pack, which gives you heated grips, cruise control, some adjustable rider modes, you know, traction control. And it also has the optional wheels for so slightly upgraded spoked wheels as well so i think this bike retails for just over fourteen thousand pound with those extras on it and it starts around about thirteen thousand late 12s i'll pop it on the screen so the 2021 speed twin starts at eleven thousand so this bike is already a couple of thousand pound more expensive than the base speed twin so jumping aboard First of all, you see this massive transversely mounted 1170cc boxer engine. You know, it, it dominates the bike, really, the engine on this. And when I first... I've not borrowed one of these before. It's the first time I've ridden an R90, and I presumed that it would have the latest you know, BMW GS 1250 shift cam engine in it. That's not the case. This is the old air-cooled, air and oil-cooled, um, boxer engine so this engine is you know, quite an old engine and the, the GS has been water cooled for donkey's years now before we set off and in the usual fashion let's just do a quick noise test you ready It sounds pretty decent, I have to be honest, it sounds pretty decent, this has got the standard cans on it and everything, but the first thing which is apparent with this engine, because it's got this boxer, boxer, you know, transversely mounted engine, when you rev it, the thing wants to lay down, you know, the pistons on these go in the same directions like this, so the pistons move together, and there's such amount of sort of sideways torque with that engine, the engine does dominate this bike, let's crack on. Where's my glasses? First thing with the Ergos, it's a much bigger bike than the uh, the Triumph and the Speed Twin. It feels bigger. That engine gives it some girth, you know, and the tank's quite wide. I think it's got a bigger tank on this. Don't know the size. I'll flash it on the screen. But the, tri the Triumph only had like a 13, little 14 litre tank. I think this is much bigger on this. But it's just a, it's just a bit different to ride. The bars, the bars are much wider on here than on the Triumph. A much wider bar. Gives you the option for a little bit more leverage. The seat feels actually maybe a little bit lower than the Triumph. It's it's not it's, you know, it's a single seat. You've not got that long you know retro styled seat. You've got a seat which is sort of nicely padded. I think it's definitely more comfortable than the than the Speed Twin on longer journeys. But the Ergos are really rather pleasant on this. Braking is done by Brembo, unlike the, you know, the new BMWs that have the haze calipers. This still has the Brembos, which actually deliver a nice amount of bite, actually. They, they pull in quite nicely. The brakes, even though the Speed Twin had M50 calipers, this has got more a more sharp... The brakes actually feel better on this. They feel sharper on this. The suspension on here is also fully adjustable, unlike the Speed Twin, which had the new Marzocchi upside down forks, but they were completely unadjustable. These are fully adjustable. Overall, the bike does ride a little bit nicer. It does feel more modern 
um, Speed Twin, which I mean, it is part of Triumph's heritage range, you know, so that is more of a retro classic. This is a bit more of a of a naked, but is it tr a naked classic? But it's it's a classic, but it's not perhaps trying to be retro. I don't know. They're slightly different, going for maybe slightly different markets, these. But this definitely feels like a more modern bike when you're riding it. As I say, with the comfort, comfort pack, I've got cruise control, I've got heated grips. You know, I've got all the mod cons on here. Well, apart from water cooling. This model with the comfort pack also has engine modes, which I mentioned. So I'm in the dynamic engine mode at the moment, which is the the sport setting if you like in the sport setting the throttle response is nice you know it's quite it's a little bit aggressive you know you've got a lot there quite quickly but it's not snatchy it's not snatchy at all unlike the Kawasaki 900 RS which I keep going back to as being a, a, a bit snatchy on the throttle this is a nicer throttle response this feels like it's got well it, it feels like it's got a lot more engine braking than what the 1200 speed twin had and when i go off the throttle you're thrown forward a little bit with the engine braking so there's a little bit more engine braking here than i would perhaps ideally want and that can make it a, perhaps a little bit tiring on longer journeys but it's not too excessive but is more there than I'd ideally want. The uh, Speed Twin had the perfect amount of engine braking, the perfect throttle response, you know, it was just effortless to ride. I think this takes a little bit more finessing to make it smooth, but it's, it's not too bad. I could live with it. Open it up, you've got bags of power. Bags of power. This engine puts out 109 horsepower. <laughs> which is about 10 brake horsepower more than the Speed Twin. The bike weighs 221 kilos, I think. Or well, could be 226 kilos. It's 10 kilos heavier than the Speed Twin. So it's, a, it's got 10 brake more, 10 brake horsepower more, but it's also 10 kilos heavier. I think it feels faster than the Speed Twin. Putting it through the first couple of twisties, I think it does handle better than the Speed Twin. It's amazing, this, 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 this boxer engine design where you've got that, you know, the weight of the engine is so low, it makes the bike turn in very, very quickly. The Speed Twin was definitely a much slower turning bike, you know. This is, feels much more on its nose even, you know, even though it's not, I can see the front wheels miles away from me. Because the weight is so low, with that boxer engine it's like the gs you know it takes you by surprise how agile and nimble it is it's got that same that same feel that same agility that the gs has got agility that belies its weight is the important thing rear brake is also very very good very very good and as i say the front actually when you pull the front it doesn't seem to dive too much i think you could almost ride this a bit more like uh, a sports bike where you're braking into the corners a little bit more on the front than having to rely on the rear it's definitely it's definitely more of a performance machine in the twisties than the speed twin was i think you can get a proper lick on on this and i've actually heard of people you know converting these to track bikes you know i think the chassis the setup is capable it's a capable machine Without doubt, it's a capable machine. What I do like about the BMWs is this cruise control system. I had the same thing on my dearly departed double R, you know, the same switch gear here with the cruise control. So you just flip that over, press the button, and then you've got cruise control. And it works really well on the BMW systems. There's no messing about with being in the right gears, you know, it just works. One press, it works. Cruise control on this is excellent. The heated grips I've got on as well really nice two levels of heated grip not three levels like on the latest like my double r three levels this has only got two but uh, it's all there also on the switch gear perspective you have the wheelie button <laughs> this button here just basically turns off the traction control turns off all the electronics at a touch of a button if you hold that down bang you get your traction light come on and you've turned off your wheelie control just just saying if just saying if that's your thing 
You've also got some lovely analog clocks. We'll look a bit closer at them on the walk around, but you know, retro clocks, two separate instrument gauges, which I really like. I love an analog ref counter. I'm going to say it again, I always say it, but I love an analog ref counter. I actually like the sort of layout of the, the fonts and the numbers used on there as well. It may not be quite as special looking as the Speed Twin clocks, but they're still very nice on this. And I do like that font. It looks classy. The clocks look classy. One thing it doesn't have, it doesn't seem to have a fuel gauge. I don't know why it's not got a fuel gauge. I couldn't quite believe it. I even did a bit of research online to see how do I get to the fuel gauge. It doesn't have one. You've got all sorts of information on the LCD there. I can tell you I'm doing 48 miles per gallon, but it won't tell me how much fuel I've got left. It doesn't have a fuel gauge, which is really a bit odd. Why doesn't this bike have a fuel gauge VW? Let's drop a cod and put it around these the set of twisties here. Yeah, that, that motor sounds nice. Vibrations from it, it's not bad. You've got more vibes at lower revs than what you do on the Speed Twin. And as the revs increase, the vibes increase, but not as much as they do on the Speed Twin. They're a bit more relative on this. They don't suddenly increase like they do on the Speed Twin. But actually, it handles lovely, actually. I think you can get a proper lick on on this. Yeah, that's very nice. The gearbox on this feels okay, actually. I, I was expecting it to feel a little bit agricultural. It actually feels a little bit less agricultural than the GS in some respects. I think if it had a quick shift and blipper, you can sometimes notice that, you know, the gearbox is a little bit slow, but using the clutch, the gearbox feels fine. The only thing I've noticed is when you go all the way down the box to first, it doesn't come to a stop. The lever still moves as if you've got more gears to go down. It goes into gear very, you can find neutral easy as well, which is nice. It's a hydraulic clutch, which I think is quite nice. It's just a cable on the speed twin. So, so I think it's got a nicer feel perhaps, but I don't, I think it's a little bit more clunky when you go up through the box on the speed twin. It's still absolutely fine. I am spitting hairs with that point. The gearbox is better than I anticipated it would be. Right, you know the routine. Let's stick it up the hill climb road. I think it's going to be a little bit wet. It's going to be a bit careful. So I'm in first. It feels like there's more gears to go, but I am in first gear. Right, it's a little bit twisty and a little bit wet. It's quite wet, actually. There's not even a dry line. We're going to have to be a little bit careful, I'm afraid. That's a shame. But it's more rewarding to ride fast than the Speed Twin. I think the problem I'd have with this is... This isn't really a retro. And I think I'd, if I had one of these, I'd still ride it too fast. <laughs> with the Speed Twin, I'm quite happy just to poodle around taking the scenery it was sort of like a 50 50 between the the ride and the journey with this with the speed twin you know taking in the scenery half of half of the enjoyment was about the ride the other half was about the bike now with this i think it's more 75 percent is about the bike and and getting the feedback and throttling through the corners and enjoying the bike and 25 percent is about the ride does that make sense or am I talking utter nonsense? Let me know in the comments. So there she is, the BMW R9T. A good looking machine. I think you'll agree. Let's have a little look around the front. This bike also comes with full LED headlights. Unlike the Speed Twin, which had a halogen front light, this has full LEDs. Let's power it up. There it is, LED headlight. Very nice indeed. So from the front, of course, you know, that engine dominates the bike. You know, those two cylinders sticking out the side of the machine. You know, they're there. You know, that, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Let's zoom in on those beauties. If you look a little bit at the ground clearance, there's plenty of ground clearance on those cylinders. I don't think you would ever touch the cylinders down. Even on a track day, 
I think you know that there's plenty there, isn't it? They're high enough in the end in the frame not to have to worry about ground clearance issues. Nice little details which I do like about it is this R90 in the aluminium there. This is like the, the air intake into the bike. It's all aluminium this. This bike does have the optional wheels. I think they're an extra 300 pounds for these sort of spoked wheels like this. A bit like what's on the Dragster. And here we have, of course, that shaft drive. Maintenance free. I do like the sound of that. Other nice little styling exercises on the bike is this little aluminium seat mount piece with this little mesh, plastic mesh infills on there, you know. Again, looks really rather tasty. The seat looks very nice. It actually feels like real leather, a real leather seat, you know, with some uh, stitching and then it's nicely shaped. The pillion seat is reasonable. The rear of the bike again, LED tail lights, and then you've got the twin exhausts on the left hand side. I guess we're going to have to move it and have a proper look. You're going to want me to move it now, aren't you? So you can have a proper look at the exhausts. Okay, there we go. That's the other side of the bike, the exhaust side. There is the rear shock. It also has some sort of easy preload adjuster here. Oh, I say easy. Oh, yeah, it will turn. You can wind up the preload. Fatty spec. Keep winding chops. Another nice little feature down here by the engine is a USB charger, so you can charge your USB devices. Those clocks, let's power them up. <laughs> nice little sweep, slightly out of sync on the needles, but uh, I forgive it. So they're nice, clear clocks, aren't they? I've got a lot of time for retro clocks like that, and uh, maybe not quite as nice as the Spud. The Speed Twin, you could argue, were a little bit too over-stylized. These are more simple bit more elegant maybe. Phone mount by the way, ultimate add-ons, 10% off LCR 10 code, just saying. You only have a very small radiator just for the oil cooler, so there's a small oil cooler but of course no, no other water cooled radiator because this bike is air and oil cooled so it means it looks neater as well without a, without a radiator for the water. But there she is, the R9T. Let's jump back on. Look at this here. I mean, look at the BMW we've put on here. There's key rings all hanging around and scratching the tank on here. Look, it's all marked, all of the tank here, where that key ring's been flapping around on the tank. Not very good. What have we got here? What's this guy on here? Something old, something classic. Is it an old Kawasaki? Oh, what do we reckon, everyone? What do we reckon that is up front? Enreg. What's, that, what's Enreg? 94? Am I completely wrong there? What do we think that could be? It's got a Kawasaki vibe to me. This one we go around the corner. Oh, it's got a bit of fairing on it. I don't know. We're going to have to get closer. We need to know. It's a K1000. It's a BMW. It's a BMW. K1100. That's a little closer now. Yes, 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 K1100. Jeez, it's quick. It's a quick, it's a quick thing, this. This isn't slow. This isn't a slow, meandering retro. This has got a proper touch of performance about it. I, ex I can see why people would perhaps track these. I'd imagine with a full system, you know, ECU map, air filters i bet you can get this up to sort of 120 125 horsepower relatively easily i would imagine and uh, with the, with the nimble handling <laughs> it would make uh, it'd be something a bit different on track wouldn't it it really would and i think you've probably got enough ground clearance of the cylinders they may bet a little bit close at times but that proper goes with this flat engine, you've also got a great place to rest your legs. You get your cruise control, I can't get that one up because I'm a young, put the cruise control on. Look at this, you've got your feet, you can literally put your feet up, <laughs> put the cruise control on. <laughs> Shouldn't do that, get in trouble. What about any niggles of this machine? Can I think of any niggles? Well, the mirrors are your standard sort of BMW affair with the mirrors. And what with the slight vibrations from the engine, you know, it, it can get a little bit buzzy in the mirrors, a little bit vibey in the mirrors, and you can sort of struggle to see 
what's behind you when you're on the throttle. When you're off the throttle and coasting, the rear visibility is fine. Uh, other niggles, now the only other niggles really is that bit of, when you come off the throttle when the revs are high and you get that bit of bit of rock, a bit of torque rock from the motor. Character, can we call that character? Yeah, I think that probably does qualify as character, so we won't say too much about that. Apart from that, I can't really think of any other niggles. Like I say, a little bit more engine braking than perhaps would be ideal for my liking, but it's fine, isn't it? Just, just getting used to the bike and jumping off something else, you notice that. But yeah, I don't think that would become a problem if this was your the only bike you rode. And when I'm in quite a higher gear now, at 40, and I'm coming off the throttle in fourth gear, it's fine, actually. I think it's only when the revs are a little bit higher that you get that extra bit of uh, engine braking. It feels stable, the turning's incredible on it. It's comfortable as well, the seat's comfortable. I think for a taller rider, as I say, I'm six foot two, I'm 19, 20 stone-ish, I'm a big fatty, and I find this much more comfortable to ride than the Speed Twin. I think the Speed Twin definitely suits a, a sub six foot rider better because it's quite cramped on the leg. There's much more room on this, much more room. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Is it better than the Speed Twin? Uh, it's different to the Speed Twin. It's more expensive than the Speed Twin. As I say, this, this version with these slightly better wheels and the, the comfort pack, this is nigh on 14,000. So it's a good 3,000 more than the Speed Twin. So can you really compare a bike which is £3,000 more expensive? Yeah, it's, it's a whole other class almost of motorcycle, isn't it? But for me, because it's a bit bigger and I'm a big guy, the Speed Twin's too small for me. If I was uh, an average size rider, is this worth another £3,000 more than the Speed Twin? I think the Speed Twin can do everything this can do. This is slightly sharper around the twisties. If you feel like it's a more, bit more engaging, it's a bit faster. Whereas the Speed Twin is definitely more about, you know, a bit as more of a sedate ride. This is more about the ride. Um, for me, because I'm taller, I'll, I'll take the R90. I, I like what I've seen here. I can't believe I haven't ridden one before. I really like what I'm seeing with this bike and you can really customise these. This is sort of like the base one, the, the blank canvas is, as you would. You, know, you can do a change, there's a lot of different choices of wheels you can put on these, all sort of billet accessories and stuff. You can really make these look absolutely incredible. Not that you can't with the Triumph, but I think the Triumph is really targeted much more as a as a retro bike, you know, much more a retro machine, which still can handle nicely, and it's got a lovely, lovely engine in it. But I think for me, the R9T would probably suit me a little bit better, but that's not to say that the Speed Twin wouldn't suit you better. So if you're in the market for a retro, my advice as always would be, go and ride both of them, see which one tickles your fancy and ticks the most boxes for what you how you know, your body shape and how you ride and how you want to use the bike that's the important thing thanks for watching as always really appreciated to come on the channel of actually getting the mitts on the new rsv4 in the next couple of weeks wheels finally have a demo of the new rsv4 so it's a bit of a, a change up from an r9 t to the latest aprilia rs9 rsv4 1100 factory but we'll be taking that old girl out for a spin let's hope the weather gods play ball also the hyper motard will be back very very soon as well so uh There'll be an episode of that coming. I'm doing a collaboration with another channel. So it's going to be really quite interesting. So there's a collaboration actually working on the engine. But more on that when that episode drops. Boom. But thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day.
side. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Lift it to bed. Oh, <laughs>